Hello everybody and welcome to this microeconomic video on how governments correct market failure by externalities, which is slightly more complicated than just simply correcting market failure. So firstly to our information section in the top left. Now if you remember back to the externalities video, one part of our externalities definition were that they are external to the pricing mechanism. That's the reason they're called external externalities. They're external to it, they're not affected by it. So therefore to correct our externality, we need to internalize it. We need to expose it to the pricing mechanism so that it's susceptible to the pricing mechanism. And by doing this, we are allowing the pricing mechanism to deal with the problem, the, the our problems such as pollution. And this can be done in four different ways. So firstly, we have regulations. Now, regulations are rules enforced by law, and they have the aim of preventing externalities from occurring in the first place. So this means that rather than correcting the market failure, we are preventing the market failure with regulations. So regulations, rules enforced by law, and they prevent the externality from arising in the first place. So for example, they would stop any pollution in the first place. Now, advantages of regulations are that they're quite easy and cheap to implement because they can go through Parliament quite quickly and they can be set up fairly easily. However, disadvantages is that there's no incentive to the businesses. So, for example, if I'm a company who are uh, polluting when I produce my good and then I'm told I have to stop polluting, so therefore I have to pay lots of money to find another way to produce my good, I've got no incentive here. I'm not making any profit from it. And remember, the aim of businesses is to make profit. So if I'm not making any profit, there's no kind of aim or incentive for me. I don't get anything out of it. Also, it's difficult to weigh up the costs with the benefits of preventing externalities. So, for example, if I introduce a regulation saying that there's no pollution allowed, then my factories, they're not going to be able to produce as much. So therefore, I'm not going to have as much economic growth. But if I allowed loads of pollution, I would have lots of production and therefore lots of economic growth. So I need to weigh up which one I prefer. Do I prefer economic growth or do I prefer environmental protection and less externalities? And also they will bring costs. As I said, if we try to cut pollution, then you are cutting production in the process and therefore reducing economic growth. Next, we have extending property rights. And this is when organizations are created which have the right to charge companies for polluting public land and the problem is that public land nobody knows who really owns it so therefore the whole idea is that this uh, this organization is set up to have a command over that public land an example would be the environment agency they control all public natural environmental lands in the country and if any company pollutes those lands the environment agency can charge them and the idea of this is that this internalizes the externality in the form of a cost. And the best example of this is the BP oil disaster. When one of the BP pipelines started leaking millions and millions of gallons of oil into the Mexican Gulf. Now what the US government did was, because it's essentially the sea that's bordering their country, they said, hang on a second, you're polluting our public land. So what they did was they created a fund which BP had to pay billions and billions and billions of pounds into. And what the US government did was it used that money to clear up the problem and pay back uh, people who got money from tourism because tourists hadn't come anymore because the sea was all black, things like that. They used that money to correct the market. So therefore they internalized the externality, this time in the form of a cost by charging BP. Uh, however, extending property rights does have its problems. For example, it can be hard to do. So with things like deforestation, if a company cuts down loads of trees, you can, you can extend property rights and you can charge them money, but then using that money to regrow the trees is difficult because growing trees takes a long time. And also it can be difficult to prove who is responsible for the problem. So say for example, if we have three chemical factories all in the same mile and there's a chemical leak, it can be very difficult to prove who the chemical leak actually belongs to. Next, we have taxes. And taxes 
are where we, we tax the individuals, so we charge the individuals for their cost of the externality. So extending property rights, we charge big companies. With taxes, we're just tar charging individuals. For example, the tax on tobacco. And the idea of this is that the e negative externality here is health issues to the smoker and to other people around the smoker, so things like lung cancer. And the government will use the money it gets on this tax to uh, put into the NHS fund of lung cancer treatment. So therefore it's internalised the externality within the pricing mechanism by charging individuals, by taxing them. The problem with this though is it's difficult to assess the value of the cost of the externality. For example, smoking causes lots of different problems, not just lung cancer. It can cause cancer in a huge variety of places, it can cause blood problems, it can cause all sorts of issues. So the government doesn't know how much to charge sometimes as a tax. Also, not all lung cancer is caused by smoking. And finally, we have tradable permits. And tradable permits, the idea is that these are pollution permits, which limit how much a company can produce, but they can be traded between businesses. So for example, smaller businesses, where it might be cheap to cut down their pollution, can sell their permit of extra pollution to big companies. And this is a system run by the European Union. And what they will do is each year, they will cut down the amount of permits they're selling. So therefore, in essence, they're allowing firms to, to pollute less and less and less each year.